What are some recent scientific breakthroughs discoveries that aren't getting enough attention? Pretty recently they started doing tests for an extremely mobile skin grafting machine. It used a kind of hydrogel out of the patient's own skin, and scans the area of the burn then just prints out the skin. There's a good chance there will be a cure for celiac disease within the next 10 years. There's currently an active and ongoing clinical trial where participants, with diagnosed celiac, are getting infusions that will ultimately reverse the autoimmune response a person with celiac has when they consume gluten. It's still far from complete, but we are closer than we've ever been to curing celiac disease. The clinical trial is taking place in Cleveland, Ohio. I was asked to be a part of it but unfortunately I just don't have the extra time. If anybody local wants more information please message me and I can get you in contact with one of the researchers. It would be great if this could lead to cures for other autoimmune disorders. I'd rather not have my body attack my thyroid. My job is coming came out with a drug that reduces the damage chemotherapy does to the body and helps regenerate blood cells faster, allowing for stronger doses to be administered and treatment schedule to be reduced heavily. This allows doctors to treat cancer more aggressively. Due to this blowing up, I am not part of research, I just work here. For those that dug through my post history, it's not uncommon for people to get degrees but work in different fields. The drug is already on the market. No, coffee doesn't actually cure cancer. Disturbingly relevant username. Draco by Tom Ridder. 4x PhD at Lincoln Labs develop a broad spectrum antiviral. 100% success rates of survivability in lethal doses of all non-retroviruses tested including but not limited to Ebola, Dengue, Flu, Cold and Herpes. Yes, you read that right. Stands for double-stranded RNA capsaic oligomerizer. It is a molecule that has two molecules bound together. The first half is a molecule which only bonds to Drimna. The second half is a molecule of DNA which carries the code for cell apoptosis cell suicide. It binds to only virally infected cells and then the cell kills itself. It's the future. Two recent studies were published regarding care of strokes outside of the 6 hour window. Up until those studies, we could only really do anything about an ischemic stroke if it happened within the last 6 hours. These two studies show that, using various criteria, we could perform thrombectomy up to 24 hours from symptom onset with statistically significant improvement in outcome for the patient. Before, if a patient woke up with stroke symptoms, there likely wasn't a dang thing we can do. Now, we can actually attempt to clear the clot and potentially restore some function. And compared to our stroke care 10 years ago which basically boiled down to well, that sucks, and then not having anything to do, stroke care has made some huge strides. Any breakthrough about your stomach being a second brain makes me happy, be it bacteria, inflammation, etc. Causing all the anxiety in your head. And people with IBS having more cases of anxiety depression. The FDA just approved ketamine as an antidepressant for treatment resistant depression in the form of esketamine as a nasal spray. It's of the few unique and hopeful approaches to treatment resistant depression that we've seen in years. Some stats put the rate of recovery as high as 80%. Not full recovery, but alleviation at least. Escatitamine. I'm sorry. People know about immunotherapy but they don't know how fast the treatments are being developed right now. I'm hopeful we see cures for different types of cancers and immune disorders in our lifetime. Gubakli Tepe, ruin discovered in Turkey that dates back to 11,000 BCE. Or further, this throws a massive wrench into our understanding of what people were capable of at that time, and hence had advanced civilizations having likely existed long before we thought they did. It has also only been about 10% excavated. Bacteriophages being used to cure diseases and being able to solve the antibiotic crisis. Given I think Kurg's Gelatover it's called, the YouTube channel that gives people existential crisis, did a vid on it. I would have to say prosthesis. You can get hands and feet that are pretty close to the actual thing that operate by feeling the muscles that remain. We will soon be long gone from the days of military style hooks and lumps of solid plastic. Can't wait till they get to the point where they are better than natural ones. Environmental DNA is pretty neat. 
There's enough sloughed off DNA from organisms in water bodies to figure out what is swimming around in it. Non-invasive Edna detection techniques have proven useful for monitoring the presence of rare or endangered species, like hellbenders. There's a few companies researchers initiatives out there figuring out how we use captured carbon dioxide as a feedstock for various chemicals, plastics and building materials, as a replacement for oil-based feedstocks. I worked for a startup that was making insulating foams for buildings, which had 25% CO2 by mass, long lifespan materials. At the moment, a lot of our climate change prevention work is around reducing CO2 produced, but this is a game changer. Instead of it being the evil, it becomes a valuable commodity. Companies are incentivized to capture it, rather than releasing it. Capturing CO2 from the atmosphere can become commercially viable. It's the carbon economy in reverse. Now I want to know if humans can threaten plant life on Earth by lowering CO2 levels too much. I think just this week scientists found debris from an asteroid that hit Mexico some 66 million years ago making a huge crater. This debris was found in North Dakota furthering the evidence that this asteroid a major factor in the extinction of the dinosaurs and much of life on Earth at the time. Take that with several grains of salt. The work hasn't been reviewed yet and he released his finding to the press. That's a massive red flag. There are CPUs that can change their internal circuitry on the fly to suit whatever problem they are working on. This can give massive power savings and free up the traditional CPU cores for other things. Imagine being able to encode a 4K game stream using just a few watts of power and almost no CPU time. The downsides are that it costs an arm and a leg, and your programs will now take 8 hours to compile. If you are a dev, Essentially it is a CPU with an FPGA next to it in the same package. The FPGA is available as an open CL target and being in the same package as the CPU shares the global memory with the CPU. The part number is the Gold 6138P. Some people are complaining that my pop science explanation is misleading. An FPGA doesn't physically change its internal circuit structure. It uses RAM-based lookup tables and multiplexers to implement a particular digital behavior. Running a computation on a FPGA is significantly more power efficient than on a CPU, but still much less power efficient than a custom physical circuit. The benefit of an FPGA is that you can change the circuit it is implementing whenever you like. You can implement a CPU on an FPGA, and I believe you can buy kits that walk you through that, but this will be orders of magnitude less powerful and efficient than an actual physical CPU. The reason that you are able to get speed and efficiency from an FPGA for a particular computation is because the compiler implements a bespoke pipeline on the FPGA as opposed to a general purpose CPU pipeline. Now, FPGAs have been around for a while, but the recent advancements are... Compilers that effectively turn programs written in higher level languages into bespoke pipelines. Before you either had to use hardware design languages or heavily stripped down versions of C. Much better clock speed and circuit density on FPGAs. Integrating FPGAs into CPUs and making all the interfacing with the FPGA transparent to the programmer. Some people can smell Alzheimer's 15 years before the first symptoms with 100% accuracy. They have identified an oil in the skin which these people detect and last week launched a device which can test for it in 15 minutes and costs very little. The T-Rex had fur. It's more the downy fuzz newborn chicks have. That fuzz isn't hair, it's feathers designed for warmth, not flight. Many birds still have them under their flight feathers. Penguins down south certainly have these types of feathers, too. China just recently sprouted cotton seeds on the moon, I saw only a few articles on the day it happened, but I haven't seen anything else since. 90% of tablasol sold around the world contains microplastics. Microplastics are also in our drinking water and in the air we breathe. It's still not known how this affects our bodies and health, but I'm guessing it's not good. Brinura was finally approved for use in Australia. It's a drug that slows the progression of the extremely rare and fatal Batten disease. 3D printing organic skin and organs. Within a decade you'll be able to safely get a new heart, liver, or large chunks of flesh after accidents or illness. Until then, 
please agree to donate organs for when you die. They truly save lives. This is definitely more than a decade away. Here at my university Chile, a physicist discovered a very reliable correlation between earth magnetic field anomalies and mega earthquakes. Practically the guy says that he can predict earthquakes with months of anticipation, if he only had the money for hiring the programmers needed for the data analysis. That one dude that cured some forms of cancer by just using the body's cells to fight the cancer cells. It's still pretty recent and I think you can only use that treatment if you've tried two other things before or if you have an urgent case. It's got a hefty price tag though. EMDR and EBT. Borderline personality disorder and PTSD are treatable. You are traumatized, not broken. They can make any type of plastic out of hemp and it's way better for the environment. It's not even a new discovery and IDK why we don't just use hemp plastics. A company in South Korea will literally genetically clone your dogs for $100,000, and the cloned dog will be born with the exact same genes as the other dog. They are even able to edit the genes, and have made dogs with glow-in-the-dark nails. But here's what's even cooler, they're trying to clone the mammoth, bringing it from extinction. In Britain, I believe, the second man ever was completely cured of HIV, if this research continues. We may be able to actually get rid of the disease altogether someday. I think his was because of a bone marrow transplant due to having cancer. It wasn't a viable option for everyone with HIV. Another commenter here mentioned it. They freaking cured HIV with stem cells with a natural resistance to the virus. That is amazing. Why do the headlines keep talking about the flash in the pan orange guy? This is so much more important. Yup, and in 3 people now. At first it was just Timothy Ray Brown, who was called the Berlin patient. Now, there is the London patient and the Dusseldorf patient who prefer to remain unnamed. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.